United We Fall, a story of family, of betrayal, of trust, of unity, of survival. An original audiobook. Chapter 6 She hardly cries at all anymore these days. Not that she's completely healed, as much as she just reached a point of being all cried out. It was business as usual in her household again. She'd wake up, get the kids off to school, head to work, cook dinner, and then off to bed to prepare herself to do it all again tomorrow. It wasn't that she didn't enjoy her life, because she did, but she would often climb into bed at night totally exhausted from her daily deeds. Her life was a far cry from boring. In addition to her regular routine, she managed to squeeze in time for visiting family and friends, going shopping, and she'd even rejoined the girls' night out posse. She had recently started wondering if she wasn't deliberately trying to keep herself constantly busy. She wondered if maybe she was afraid to sit still, afraid to be alone with her thoughts. It seemed like she was trying to hit that bed so hard that she would be too tired to even dream. Dreaming wasn't something that she looked forward to anymore. What used to be her escape route to carefree fantasies had turned into a dark place of shadows and the creatures that lurked within. In her dreams, or dream I should say, these days there was only the one dream. It was always the same. In this dream, it was she who was the monster, the thing to be feared. It's funny how we can feel guilt over something that we do in our dreams. Life goes on, she'd say each morning as she recommitted herself to doing all that she could for her family. All this was hard work for her, but it really seemed to be paying off. Her children were smiling, laughing, trashing the house, picking on each other, and whining when it was time for homework or bed. The kids were certainly back to normal. She and her husband were smiling at each other a lot more too, almost like they did when they first met. She smiled to herself as she pondered this. One night they went out on a date to their favorite eatery. At the encouragement of her best friend who doubled as the babysitter for the evening. While at the swank, expensive restaurant, they received plenty of stares from the other patrons from their repeated outbursts of laughter and constant giggling. The evening was incredible, she later told her girlfriend. The food was excellent and the conversation was terrific. Great, girl, I'm so happy to hear that. You, more than anybody else, deserve to be happy. Now give me some details that make them juicy. They both laughed. While the food was better than excellent, the lobster was cooked to perfection. They served it with a, yeah, yeah, enough about the food, girl. Tell me how things went between you two, her girlfriend prodded. Well, she said shyly, semi-rolling her eyes and smiling. He is an attractive man, and he was extremely charming and funny, she said. We had so much fun. We laughed so loudly that we almost got thrown out of the place, she beamed proudly. I had the time of my life, she said as their hands connected. And after dinner, did you too? Her friend inquired. There was a momentary silence and their eyes locked. What was communicated in that brief knowing glass between friends made further words unnecessary. They smiled at, e at each other and then broke out into laughter. After a while, she looked at her watch, gave her girlfriend a warm embrace, and along with the promise to call her later, she headed home to her loving family. Life really is great, she was thinking and smiling to herself on the drive home. My life sure has returned to normal, she continued, and then the smile slowly faded as thoughts of the dream invaded her serenity. Stop it, she said aloud, trying to command the negative thoughts away. It's only a dream, damn it. No freaking dream is going to steal my joy. Her voice was getting louder, although there was no one else in the car. She turned on the radio, checked her speed, and took a deep breath. Yeah, my life is normal, she said as she exhaled and waited for the red light to change. And then, in perfect synchronicity, 
The light turned green right as a mental light came on in her head. She didn't want to listen to her thoughts, but the music from the car just wasn't loud enough to drown it out. Is it? The thought asked. Really? It continued relentlessly. She started to perspire lightly in dread anticipation of where these thoughts were going to take her. What about the phone calls? The thought asked, and the strange numbers in his phone. She was guilty. She felt ashamed that she had given in to her curiosity and checked his cell phone once or twice. She wanted these thoughts to stop, but she was completely at their mercy. What about the time you called him and he didn't answer his phone? He never even called you back for over an hour, said the thought. He was busy at work. It could have happened to anybody, she argued with herself. Suddenly a car horn blared. What the? She snapped back into reality, just in time to swerve and avoid plowing into the side of a huge tow truck. Damn it. She cursed herself for not seeing that red light. Pull it together, girl, she told herself, quickly, quickly looking around to see if anybody else saw her near-fatal mistake, especially the police. She was safe. No harm, no foul, no cops, she told herself. Just keep your eyes on the road, she coached herself. As her breathing slowed back down to a normal rate, she started to feel relief. Relief that the thought police had finally decided to leave her alone. Even more relieved that they didn't ask her the really tough question. The question that she had no answer for. The one that really scared the shit out of her. Scared her so much that she hadn't told anybody about it. Not even her best friend. The other day in the bedroom, as she was changing the linens, she made a terrible discovery. Sticking out between the mattress and the box spring, just barely noticeable was an eight inch butcher's knife. The question is, how the hell did it get there?